Rex, what are you doing on my screen? Have we ever had you as a feature animal before? You seem awfully familiar. I don't know, you're a pretty amazing creature. My goodness, living such a long, 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 long time ago. My goodness, more than what, 65 million years ago? Or at least that's when you died out, you poor fellas. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, you had to make room for the mammals. That would be us. Sorry. But you know what? You're pretty vicious looking. I like it. You're cool. You know what? I'm going to just make you a little bit smaller because you're blocking part of my screen. But hey, great to have you along. Yeah. Good old T-Rex. Now. Let's get down to business. That's right. I'm telling my producers telling me. Okay, we have a learning target today. Yes, I love learning targets. They help us. Let us know what are we doing? What's the purpose? I need meaning in my life, Mr. Wara. Well, we will give you some meaning. Here it is. We are going to be dividing decimals, but with the remainder using place value understanding and relate to a written method. Oh my goodness, this one seems so much shorter than that last learning target that we had in a previous video. We do have some language frames here. Are these the same ones? They look kind of new, don't they? Yeah, we have one here. It says, in order to blank, I followed these steps blank. Yeah, these are just like little frames. So you can kind of make it work when you want to articulate your mathematical reason, your understanding. In order to divide, I follow these steps, blah, blah, blah. And that's how you kind of answer. Okay, same thing. In order to solve this problem, I need to know blank because, and then my model shows my thinking. Okay, and I will, of course, be using my own language to hopefully get you to better understand our steps. Okay, looks like we have a free blank page that I can use to write on. So let me go ahead and write this expression here. Okay, as you can see, I've added here a place value chart. And I have my place value disks. And I've also drawn three perfectly round circles there at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and first represent my 6 and 72 hundredths on my place value chart using my place value disks. Okay, so I have some ones and I have 7 tenths and 2 hundredths. Okay, as I'm trying to make three equal groups, that's my goal here, I'm going to go ahead and start with the largest unit first. Now, can we share six ones equally with three groups? Yeah, that's a pretty easy one, right? I'm going to move two over here. I'm going to just take two over there. Make another two over here. So I'm going to go ahead and cross out my six ones here as they've already been shared. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to my tenths. As I have no more ones I can share. Now seven tenths divided by three. How many tenths? can I share with each group? Again, it looks like two tenths, right? We're gonna have two tenths. So again, I'm going to cross out six tenths as I've shared two tenths with each group down below. I think as I do this pictorially, I'm also going to do this showing the algorithm. So we shared two ones for each. We shared two tenths each, and this shows my one left over. Let's stop here for a moment. We're subtracting the six tenths because we have to take the six tenths away because we shared them. But how many more tenths are there left to share? Yeah, there's just one tenth there. We, we can't share the one tenth with three groups. So what are we going to, what could we do to kind of keep sharing? Because otherwise we just come to an end, right? Oh, wait, I could go ahead and I could make a little exchange. Okay, regrouping, call it an exchange on the place value chart. I could take my one tenth, right, and regroup that as ten hundredths. That way I would have twelve hundredths. Let me do that. Okay, so here's my one tenth now, and I've made that into ten hundredths. I have two, four, six, eight, ten hundredths is equal to one tenth. I'm going to go ahead and cross that one tenth off now since I've regrouped or made that like we want to refer to as the word exchange, convert. All these different verbs to describe the same thing. Now, can we share 12 hundreds with three groups? Yeah, we can. Definitely. Okay, we can share four hundreds with each group. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so there's four hundreds I put in there. Let me cross those out. Since I put four in that very first group, I get another four. Okay, here we go. Completed. Done. So that those two hundredths I bring down here and now I join that with the one tenth. Now I have twelve hundredths down here so I can subtract those because I distributed those and that went in there. There was four in each group. So now I have two ones and twenty-four hundredths or two and twenty-four hundredths. 
on here, I had to subtract them because those 1,200s have been shared now. I shared them 400s in each group. Um, they are now divided into the groups. So we have to, of course, subtract. And 1,200s minus 1,200s is equal to 0. Okay, and look at the three groups we have. Now, how many are in each group? Well, you see we have our two ones, we have our two tenths, and our four hundreds that are in, in each group. Do we have any other units that we need to share? No, there's no digit in the thousands place. So the thing that I would want you to keep in mind is how this division uh, with the decimal units is like whole number division. Where's the connection there? You know, when you think about, well, I guess what I'm trying to to make known is that it's really the same thing dividing decimal numbers or decimal units. It's the same as dividing with whole numbers, except we're sharing units that are smaller than the ones place. That's all. We have our tenths and our hundreds. We still shared them. There's no difference there. Our quotient uh, does have a decimal point because we're sharing fractional units because we're sharing units that are less than one okay and the decimal shows where that one's place is now sometimes we have to change the decimal units like we did in this problem just like we we change the whole number units in order to continue dividing there's no difference there that's all the same but let's go ahead and just write this problem down and i guess i'll write it right here i just want to put six and seven two hundreds divided by three equals we came up with that 2n 24 hundredths. Just wanted to write that down. Okay, let's look at another one. Let's have 5 and 16 hundredths divided by 4. I am going to use my place value chart with my place value disks, and I'm also going to show you the algorithm as we go through. I have 5 ones, I have 1 tenth, and I have 6 hundredths. And let's set it up for our algorithm 5 and 16 hundredths. We're going to take that and we're going to make four equal groups. My decimal point up, up, and away. Yeah. Okay. Just like last time, we started off with the larger units. Let's do that. I can see that I have five ones. I have four groups. One will go in each group. Okay, I've shared the four. I need to take away four. So I was able to share one one in each group. And there's my one. Now I need to subtract those. And I end up with one one left over. Okay, now I can't share that last one with any of the groups, though this is the time where I could do a little exchange. I would want to exchange the one one into 10 tenths. I've exchanged that one one now with 10 tenths. So now I have the 10 tenths that I had there, plus my one means I have 11. Can I share 11 tenths equally with four groups? I can. It looks like that I could put two tenths in each group because two times four would be eight. So since I was able to share two tenths in each of the groups, I'm gonna go ahead and put that two up there. Oh, I forgot to show my one, so my one tenth, remember I exchanged. You may recall, I actually had one tenth, one one left over, and I had one tenth there, now I have 11 tenths. Okay, and I'm showing that I could share two tenths in each group, which is eight. So I'm going to subtract that since I've shared those two. But with three tenths left over, that doesn't allow me to share it one more time equally. I'm going to go ahead and take away my eight tenths. So I'm left with three here. Now with three tenths left over, yeah, I can exchange those three tenths for 30 hundredths. Okay, I've shown my exchange. A little messy here. I had to use a different color. And there's a whole bunch of them in here. You can see why this is why the algorithm comes in handy later on to draw all of these. So I have 30 hundreds there, plus I have the six that were already there, which means I have 36 hundreds. Well, 36 hundreds, right, divided by four. Since we just use that unit form, that's just our basic fact. So that's going to be nine in each group. So let's go ahead and put nine in each group. Okay, so now I have my nine in each group. I'm gonna go ahead and cross out that entire thing all in one piece. So I had my three tenths that was left over from my 11 tenths I subtracted. So now I'm gonna bring down my six and you can see I have 36 hundreds. That's what we had. And so we said we could put nine in each group and therefore I need to subtract them as I'm sharing each one of those, and we end up with no remainder. We end up with one and 2,900s. And is that true? We have 
one, yes we do, we have two tenths and we have nine hundredths. Wow, I love when things work out, don't you? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, all right. Man, that was a kind of a doozy of a problem. Okay, so let's look at another problem here. This one is very similar to the first problem that we did, except that in this case, we have divided by four. And so we're going to want to make four equal groups. And I'm gonna go ahead and do what I have always done, and that is the first to represent that dividend. So let's go ahead and do that. I will probably speed through this particular one. This might be a good opportunity for you to uh, maybe do it on your own if you wish. And then, you know, just hit the, put the video on pause and, and come back to it. I will speed it up and not explain every single step, but rather show you all my work. So here I've exchanged my two ones as I was unable to share those equally and exchange those two ones into 20 tenths. Now I have 27 tenths. Okay, I was able to put six tenths in each group and that would give me 24 tenths altogether. I need to subtract those, leaving me with three tenths left over. Okay, so I've completed this problem, quite a bit of uh, exchanging going on between, and that's what they mean by with the remainder. Some of you may be looking at the problems and saying, you know, Mr. Wara, the learning target said that you're going to divide decimals with the remainder, but what we've done is, they refer to the remainder was left over in each unit. Oops, did I not cross these? Oh, I forgot to convert these. And so did I get one in 6800s? It looks like I have one one there. It looks like I do have six tenths, and I do have eight hundreds, and everything was able to be shared once I exchanged the units into a different unit forms from ones to tenths and then tenths to hundreds. Okay, now that we've had the opportunity, we've, we've looked at some different things. We've definitely looked at solving this problem with the use of a place value chart and place value disks and showing that modeling, that pictorial, which is so key to Common Core, we've done that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another problem, but this time we're going to go ahead and, and work with the problem just using the standard algorithm to solve. So we won't have to do a model, which I'm sure some of you are like, woohoo, yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and write that using my standard algorithm. I have my dividend as six ones three tenths, seven hundredths, and two thousandths, and it's going to be divided by six, so we're trying to make six equal groups, right? Well, since we have six ones, yeah, six ones, we can put each one in each group, right? So there'll be one in each group, meaning that we used six of the ones, and we're going to subtract those, and I'm just going to talk through this, so that way you see how that pictorial matches up with our algorithm, and then of course, that means that we move on into the tenths column, which we have just three. Unfortunately, three tenths is not enough to share equally with six groups. So in this case, we have to say that yeah, zero of those tenths were able to be shared. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have to move over with three tenths and see with my hundreds. And that means exchanging those three tenths into hundreds, which means I'll have 30 hundreds plus the seven I already have there. Now I have 37 hundreds. Well, that's great because I can share that and I can put six hundreds in each group, which would give me 36 total. So I'm going to subtract all those that I shared and now I have just one hundredth remaining. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the thousands. But what I need to do is, since I can't share that one because that is a remainder, that's what's left over here, I'm going to exchange that one hundredth and turn it into ten thousandths. So that means with the two thousandths I have there plus the ten is going to give me twelve thousandths. Well, yeah, I can share that. I can share two thousandths in each group, okay? And that would be twelve thousandths that I'm sharing with those six groups, leaving me with zero. Isn't that nice? Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, interestingly, the big thing that we learned here, is this problem different than just doing whole numbers? Yeah, a little bit, but in some ways it's very, very similar, right? We learned that decimal units are very similar in the way that we need to regroup, rename, exchange. These are all synonymous. All these words mean the same. And dividing, okay? Okay, my friends, I do believe that concludes. Uh, do we have anything else over here? Oh, you again. Oh, it's that pesky rhino. Man, you know, you just keep showing up everywhere. You are, you know what? I think I might have the answer for you. Yes. You know who I have hiding behind here? Yeah, it's my guard dog. I call him my guard T-Rex. That's right. Yeah, the only thing that separates you and him is this, that's right, this thin bar. But you know, I have a special key, and I just click it, and guess what? That T-Rex is going to run free. <laughs> Thank you.
Oh, really? Okay, well, let's just see about that. Ah, now, somebody's in trouble. Okay, I apologize. I had to bleep part of that there. It got a little, let's just say, just got a little bit uh, ugly. Hi, <laughs> Mr. Wara. Where do you come up with this? I have no idea. <laughs> now, my friends, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>